hi everybody welcome back to my channel last July so like a month ago um, arrow was doing a sale and there were some things that I wanted to pick up so this video is basically just me showing you um, my arrow pickups from last month everything that I got I had seen except for I think maybe two movies that I picked up during the sale so a couple of those were new watches for me and I was pretty excited about that and I was actually very excited about it when I watched them because they were actually really good um, but I just wanted to give you guys a peek at what I did pick up let's take a look so the first one that I got is children of the corn and this is the 4k with the slip cover now all of these were on sale from Aero Video um, in the month of July. Um, this I had seen a million and a half times, but I didn't own it and I didn't know why. And I know there's like 18,000 Children of the Corn movies, but to me, this is the only Children of the Corn movie that matters and the only Children of the Corn movie that I would want in my collection. So this is the one that I picked up. I really have no idea why I didn't have this movie before, but I have this movie now. So I'm very grateful. All right, the second one, oh, there's a little bit of glare there. So we'll take it out of the, out of the, out of the protective cover. Bear with me. I'm new at this. I'm, I'm not an expert. I'm not a pro. I'm going to get there though. I promise you. Okay. So this is the 12 Monkeys Blu-ray Steelbook from Arrow Video. And I do, I do keep the J card. I am one of those people who keeps the J card. Um, this one, I have this movie, but I had it on DVD. And I, I love Bruce Willis movies. So of course, I had to pick this up when it was on sale. I couldn't justify it just any other time because, you know, that would just be like spending money redundantly. So when it was on sale, I was like, all right, I can do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get it. And so I got it. So here's this one. It's 12 Monkeys. For some reason, when I was watching this, this time, it was the first time I realized that Brad Pitt was in this movie. It's like I've seen this movie so many times that I just never like put two and two together. But I was like, oh, that's Brad Pitt. All right, moving on. This movie is called Flowers in the Attic. Um, it was originally a novel and there's a whole series of them. There's like 500 of them. And there's really like seven maybe seven or eight. I don't know. I haven't read them all. My mother has read them all. And I remember when this movie came out, I was a really little kid and I shouldn't have been watching this movie, but my mom let me watch this movie with her. And I saw it on Arrow Video and I was like, is that that movie that I saw when I was a kid about those kids who were trapped in the attic and their grandmother was weird and there was something weird happening with all the... Yeah, so I picked this up because I could, I'd seen it before, but I was so little that I didn't remember it and I couldn't remember the entire plot. So I did pick this up and I did watch this with my mom because I was like, hey, yo, you remember that movie that we watched so long ago that you shouldn't have let me watch? And she was like, oh yeah, that one. Have you read all the books? I was like, lady, if you don't stop, <laughs> I'm not reading all the books. I love to read, but I'm not reading all of those books. They're just, the story gets so silly. And I know there's like a whole mini series on Lifetime about it, but I'm just not, I'm not going to engage. This is the only one I'm going to get. Only one I'm going to watch. All right. So I did also pick up Tremors. I hadn't seen this one before. Um, I was very like, eh, Kevin Bacon isn't always like on my radar. So I had kind of avoided this movie, but because it was on sale, I was like, all right, I'll bite the bullet and I'll go ahead and give it a watch. And I gave it a watch and it was actually great. It held my attention. Um, even though it's an older movie, it still holds up really, really well. Like the effects hold up pretty well for what they could do at the time. And then when you transfer it to 4K, it doesn't look terrible. So I was actually pretty impressed with this movie and I did really enjoy it. All right, the crazies. 
I'll be honest, I don't, I don't remember if I watched this. Did I watch this? This movie. But for some reason, this one, I know I watched it. And as I read the back cover, I am totally, totally familiar with, oh yeah, I did watch that. But nothing about the movie actually stuck out to me. So I'm going to actually give it another watch because I feel like maybe I was doing something. Maybe I was on my phone. Maybe I wasn't paying enough attention. So this one is definitely, oh no, I fell asleep like four times. I remember now. And it wasn't the movie. It was just, I was so tired that I kept waking up and falling asleep and waking up and falling asleep and waking up and falling asleep. And finally I woke up and I was like, oh, thank God that movie's over because I'm so tired. I remember now. I will give this one another watch because I think this one is probably really good and I was just missing it. So let's see what else we have. Oh, oh, oh. We have the original The Hills Have Eyes by Wes Craven. I say by Wes Craven, directed by Wes Craven. Um, this one, I, I will admit that I am more of a sucker for the remake than I am for the original, but I do like the original and that's why I picked it up and I like that it was in this nice box and it looks great with the rest of my Arrow videos. So that's why I picked this one up. Um, but I do really, I really like the remake much better and it's not just because i'm younger believe me i like plenty of older movies i think it was just the experience that i had the first time i watched it in the theater with my friends and we were you know young and dumb and acting stupid and we had a really great time with this movie the the remake of this movie and it was just it's something that even all these years later we bring up that time we went to the movies to see The Hills Have Eyes. So I had to pick up the original because I'd seen it before and, you know, I enjoy it. But, you know, it, it's one of those Wes Craven movies that you just need to have. And I have pretty much every other Wes Craven movie. So I didn't know why I didn't have this one. So I went ahead and picked this one up as well. All right. This one. I don't know if you guys can see there's a little bit of glare there. This one's called Crimson Peak. And I'm spacing on what I wanted to say about this movie. No, this was really good. It took a whole entire different direction than I thought it was going to take, which was fine. But, um, you know, Guillermo del Toro, his movies, I love, visually, I love his movies. Plot-wise, sometimes they're hit or miss. Um, but visually I really love his movies and this one did not disappoint it wasn't as um I guess not as engaging visually as some of his other ones like Pan's Labyrinth um even Hellboy um what other ones The Shape of Water was really good visually for me even though I didn't like the movie um but this was a Guillermo, de Guillermo del Toro movie that I didn't have so I went ahead and grabbed this one as well All right, let's see if you can see it. This is called JSA, it's Joint Security Area. It is a movie about the joint security area uh, that separates North and South Korea and the security guards who actually guard that area. Um, the reason I picked this up was actually because, I mean, I had been like eyeing it for a while and this was a first time watch for me. I had been eyeing it for a while and then there was that thing that happened a few weeks ago where the uh, army, U.S. Army soldier kind of ran across the border and everybody was like, why'd he do that? Um, <laughs> so I thought I would pick up this movie and give it a watch. And I have to tell you, this movie was fantastic. It, it went somewhere that I was not expecting at all, but it was so even though I had to read subtitles, which I don't always mind. It was so good. I loved it. I could watch it again, but I just watched it and I have 50,000 other things to watch. So I won't watch it again right away, but I will definitely, definitely be watching this a couple of times in the future. All right. And then the very last pickup, which is Pitch Black. 
Now, I've seen this movie 474 million times. I did not need to buy this movie because I have VHS copies of this movie. I have DVD copies of this movie. I have Blu-rays. I have steelbooks. I have every other copy in the world of this movie. You give me an alternate variation of the taste and cover, I will buy it. I am a sucker for this movie. So when this 4K dropped, I was like, you know what? I don't need it because I just bought the Blu-ray, the Arrow Blu-ray, with a slipcover at that point in time. And I was like, I'm not going to buy some more Pitch Black. I've seen this movie so many times that you could just ask me to like quote the entire movie from beginning to end and I could do it. It's sick. So I didn't need to get this. But because it was on sale and I am a sucker for this movie. I was like, all right, got to get it in 4K. So I finally picked up this movie in 4K and I watched it and it was phenomenal. It was as great as it was the first time I saw it, which was a million years ago. I just love this. If you have not seen this movie, it's basically about a bunch of passengers on a crashed space transporter who kind of have to learn to get along in order to save themselves from the eclipse and aliens that are ultimately going to kill them. Meanwhile, Riddick is an escaped convict who everybody is slightly maybe afraid of? Not entirely afraid of. They eventually learn <clears throat> that he's not the bad guy, even though he really is. But <laughs> he's not. This movie might not be the best movie in regards to plot or directing or acting or any of those technical things, right? But this movie is a fantastic character study. And everybody, everybody should just watch this movie for the characters alone. What are their motivations? Why are they doing what they're doing? Why are they acting the way they're acting? Are they all gonna get along to get along? It's great. You guys have to check this one out. So that's it. Those were all of my Arrow pickups for the month of July. Um, I don't know, guys. I feel like I bought more. I didn't, I didn't need all of these. I really didn't. Especially since I'm still working on getting everything behind me organized. With what's going on back there, I actually decided that things that I plan to upgrade, like movies that I have on DVD that I plan to upgrade, I took them off the shelves because I was like, man, this is too much stuff. So if there's something that I'm gonna upgrade to either Blu-ray or 4K or some other variation, I kind of just piled it over there, you guys can't see, behind the camera, and I am working on getting rid of it and getting the upgraded copy to actually put on the shelves. So that's why there's so much bare space and that's also why I'm like, I don't know, a, a little less organized than I wanted to be at this point. But you know, that's all that I can do. I can only do what I can do, right? That's all what we can all do. We can only do, we can only do what we can do. And so um, there's no there's no shame in that. You gotta go at your own pace and I'm trying to work at my own pace on this one and I'm getting done what I can get done. So hopefully soon everything will be organized and I will be able to go ahead and show you guys all of my movies and give you guys a tour of, I don't know if I'll give you a tour of the whole movie room. That might be a little much because it's kind of movies and media. Like I have a lot of books because I do, like I said, I read a lot. So um, We'll just do like this part of the room and we'll see how that goes. But anyway, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.